What's the reasoning behind it? Ten seconds remaining. I mean, it's decent up against Troll, and one-shotting Shadow Shaman remaining. could be very strong. Um, but at the same time, I'm just very afraid of no one OD. Storm. Or no one Storm. Interesting. Heroes. Yeah, it's, it's, they, they just uh, think of any sort of uh, brainstorm, you know, you, you said you like the fact that she deletes supports, and, you know, if they do have the control on no one, they're definitely going to be able to burst whoever they get the lasso on. Maybe that's what they're thinking about? Yeah, if Crystallize does get the space, it's going to be a very good PA game, but I'm just worried about getting the space in the first place, because it doesn't look like they're going to have great reactions to uh, very high aggression from VP in the early game. Yeah, anyway, with that, we are into... A uh, game number five. I'm Prepare I'm very game. excited here because uh, it's a full best of five, and I and I really hope both these teams they don't revert to you know extremely safe play because they know their tournament fives are on the line. They they have to keep looking. They have to keep looking for plays that they're able to make. They can't just uh, sit back and wait till everyone is six slotted. Right, so it looks like Crystallize is just gonna go top here with three Navi supports trying, I mean, two Navi supports as well as uh, Blizzy trying to secure these bottom bounty runes. They have the vision given out to them on Ramses thanks to this sticky napalm. They're walking up to the high ground. So, no, he hasn't leveled yet, so he can get a point into a Photic Shield, but there's no Firefly, so I don't think it really matters. Long channel there from Taneko. And they're taking a lot of damage, but with the shackles hit, I think Seneko might be the one in trouble. They're able to walk down to the high ground. Everyone getting very low here from all these sides, other than Blizzy. And now they're on top of Roger. It looks like they really want Solo, but they're turning around onto Roger. They have the long cast. So it's gonna, going to be able to get a bit of harass. So both the supports from VB, VP sent back to base, but does it really matter? Doesn't look like it, at least. So two runes definitely going to be able to be got here by the side of Navi. And maybe even three by because Crystallize just walking away from Pasha. Just knowing he'll possibly go for that Barrow Strike into that first rune. Yep, and that's the perfect thing to do when you're uh, playing a carry one-on-one -on -one against an offlaner with a stun. Don't try to go for both. Just pick one and take it. It's way lower risk and you're pretty much guaranteed to get a bounty. So well done by Crystallize there. Does the classic carry play, saves up some gold, buys a Quelling Blade in the side shop instantly. So that's very nice for him. So you said they might send the Batrider to this top lane, but it looks like they're actually just keeping Soneko with the uh, Crystallize. Do you, do you think they just favor shutting down the Troll's farm instead of enabling Crystallize? I guess so, because um, Batrider is a very good hero against oh, Troll. Baby. So they might just want to make sure that this troll has a miserable time, so PA can just have the time to catch up. And I mean, PA is gonna be able to farm against Shadow Shaman and Sand King. I don't really feel like she's gonna die or anything, but she might just struggle a little bit with a high-level Sandstorm and just trying to find these CS. So, uh, Solo and Ramses, uh, could they have a fairly okay time? Or do you think the bat is actually gonna be able to pressure this Troll Warlord in this lane? I mean, in theory, they should be completely fine, but sometimes Zayats just completely defies theory as a whole. So it's gonna come down to individual player, I think. Got you, yeah, and, and uh, Z Zayak, he's... Oh, I thought he was at, would actually be a bit closer to his level two after he uh, pulled that Crete Wave over here. But it looks like he's given Blizzy a fair amount of experience. Solo, even getting a CS with the help of his Mistcoil. That's the dream as a position 5. You're rich now. Yeah, one, one CS. That's, I would definitely complain about that if I was uh, Ramses. How dare you steal my CS? That's probably what he's saying. But they have the slow of the axes. Like he's still not level 2. So they're more than happy to aggress on him. But they need to be careful. And now he's hit level 2. He does have the Firefly. They go for the Aphotic Shield. And I've obviously managed to miss first blood here in this top lane. But let's see if there's going to be another kill over here. They do throw down the Drunken Ball. And they're going to be able to walk away from Ramses. Diets try to be aggressive, but it's kind of hard to be aggressive as a level 2 Batrider because both your Firefly and your Napalm don't really deal that much damage yet. So if you don't have like 5 stacks, it's kind of hard to get a kill there. But yeah, we just saw the, the Burrow Strike and then right clicks from Shadow Shaman and ultimately there was just too much damage for Soniko. So Crystallize might be having a good time, but Soniko isn't. 
The, I mean, that, that's the role of a support, really, to just... Uh, as long as he's enabling crystallize, he should feel okay with it. I guess so. Meanwhile, on mid, we, we see no one having a great time against Magical, who's kind of struggling at the moment. 10 and 1 against an 18 and 4 storm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, are, are you surprised that this lane is uh, so heavily in favor of no one? And, and he might be trying to go for a kill on Magical. He's got rid of his flame card, but it looks like it was just harassed for both sides. Might just be no one out playing him a little bit right now, but I expect this lane to be uh, still relatively even. I don't feel like it's going to be suddenly a huge win for no one. Okay. Just a better few creep waves. We saw some aggression onto Crystallize here, but obviously with that point into the Phantom Strike, Crystallize is pretty survivable as long as Seneco is properly positioned. Meanwhile, Blissey once again kind of struggling in this laning stage. Rams is 21 and 6. Blissey only 9 and 0 for now. Okay, Magical. He committed for a rune. Let's see if he finally gets it. <laughs> He said he's always unlucky as Abdon denies himself. And no, Zayak is going to be the one to get this rune. And he's not even going to leave it for his magical Ember Spirit, the one with the bottle. Because he's rotating to the mid lane. How far away from level 6 is no one? Pretty far away. So he's going to body block up that. And this Batrider is still sitting here. Meanwhile, Nako, he goes down again while we were waiting for this kill to happen in the mid lane. And it looks like it never will. The pings must have come out that this Batrider is missing. It's, it's still twice. fairly risky for no one though, because he doesn't have boots. If he steps into the, this Rizzo, he, river, he could be in trouble. Yeah, now they see where he is, I, but the Batrider is already returning back. And and now I re Oh, actually that ward just came down from Solo, so it hadn't scouted him out previously. But Zayek, that, ro that rotation, it, it just didn't pay off. Really nice uh, safe play there from no one. Looks like Rams is still completely free farming here. Crystallize is having a decent time as well on this top lane, but Ramses is just on another level right now, fine wise. Yeah, so uh, talking about Ramses, is this the game where he's building a battle period going towards the late game? Or is he gonna go for the SMY BKB type style so that they're able to fight a bit earlier? I feel like he definitely has the opportunity to be a bit greedy here because he's had such a good laning stage so far. And I feel like the rest of VP is going to be perfectly fine creating the space he needs. That's um, magical that flame guard saves it from all the damage actually of no one. So a lot of mana expended for little gain. Magical is going to have his level 6 after this catapult. So he should be mostly fine in this lane. Yeah, but uh, but Crystallize, uh, you talked about this. It is 10 CS behind the Troll Warlord. So his lane, it hasn't been impeccable. Seneco's gone down twice. And no one zips forward. Where is this rune? It's in the bottom lane again. Magical, he does have his level 6. So if he needs it to be able to escape. But this haste rune, who's going to be able to get to it first? Is Solo. There's Zyax. Not going to have the need to deny it. And Zyax filling his own bottle. But again, Magical... Mag even throwing out a random, but he isn't gonna get it. Poor Magical, he's never gonna get the room. As in the top lane, we saw PA just overplaying her hand, was shackled inside the Sandstorm. As Seneco did go for the Fates Edict, so he wasn't taking magical damage, but he just dropped to the right clicks. And now they found Seneco, they have Zyke, but he's not able to cancel the Shackle, he's only level 2. They have the stun, and this fire, it's not gonna matter. And Roger, just happy, more than happy to TP out. This top lane, it's been an absolute massacre for the side of VP. Yeah, and this level 2 Batrider can't really do anything right now. He really needs more levels. Even though he had like 5 duration, five seconds of Firefly duration on top of Napalm, he just couldn't kill anyone. And it's looking very good for VP so far. Both of their big coins are doing really well, and their offlane is getting kills. Yeah, 2k advantage already this early, so... And I think you're totally right with this advantage, Ramses. He can afford to get greedy if he wants to. Blizzy still not level 6. He is very close to it. After one more Radiant Creep dies, he'll have it. So now he has this split, he's a bit less susceptible to dying. Yeah, but at the same time, he can't really do that much with this split right now. He doesn't really have any kill potential with it. 
Roger, they rotate in with Solo, but they do have the heals over on Sight. Now, Chris Sight, he's diving forward, wants to kill on the Shadow Shaman. He's still not level 6 and the heals. It's a nice Barra Sight from Prasha. They're also TPing in on the Storm Threat. He's going to be able to clean up all these kills. He does stop off to get the kill over on Sight, and it looks like Sonoko is going to be there. He pops a stick just to get a tiny bit more wrap. Man, um, no one's rotation nets a double kill for this Storm. Yeah, and they rotate in five people, actually, but they do get two kills. It looks like they might just be able to take the tower here. Radiant so, very timely tower. rotation by Ramses. And well, magical, gonna find a rune here. At long last, he finds the rune for himself. He's put three points into the Flame Guard, so he should be able to farm the jungle uh, fairly fast to at least try and recover here. I'm still so worried about Zayats. He's just so low level right now. Yeah, and he's probably going to go shackled. down again. Roger, this level two in the shackles. Ramses, he really wants it in there, but he has the range whirling axes if he needs it. One more hit, and he should get the kill. But the whirling axes there are enough to get Zayak. Meanwhile, Navi is trying to make a trade happen on this bottom lane, but their lineup doesn't really push fast. Looks like Ramses is actually going for a defusal first, so deciding to go for that aggressive build as opposed to the farming one. Magical has this uh, this regen rune already bottled. It looks like it is just going to be a tower for tower trade. Ramses obviously just pushed that slightly bit further, but not that many points in the in the Radiant's further, so tower these towers don't attack. melt Radiant's as they do to a later game troll. Gonna fly out his first blade of alacrity. He's probably gonna have a pretty timely defusal blade here. And we spoke about this before, but these heroes like Ember, they're agility heroes, but they're super mana dependent. So if you can get on top of a PA or a Brewmaster or an Ember, and you can get a few hits in, they're just gonna be completely useless. So getting an early defusal is gonna be really good here. So uh, do you like this over the SMY, just the ability to chase people and as you said, get rid of the mana pools on the incredibly mana dependent heroes? I mean, it certainly gives them the opportunity to just completely roll over Navi. If you don't build a battle fury and you just keep fighting, you're not gonna get crystallized space either. And he's going for a Midas, but at 10 minutes, he's still very far away. Yeah, I'm honestly very surprised that he's gone for this Midas. You should... The usual farm accelerator we see on PA is obviously that battle fury, but do you think he's just going for the kind of in-between item because Midas is cheaper? Yeah, I think so. If he would go for a battle fury, his team would get punished so hard because he wouldn't be ready to fight for a long time. In while we saw Pasha nicely avoiding both Blizzy as well as Magical. Uh, we have the level 6 on Roger, and this means they're going to be able to throw down the Serpent Wards. For an easy tier one tower mid, putting a lot of priority on this tower, they bring in uh, their four man, leaving Pasha here on this bottom lane, but making sure that the side of they're not able to turn it around. Yep, and at the same time, we see both Seneco as well as Zayats not having their level six yet. So VP is even stronger right now because they have the levels on supports. So Pasha, sitting in the sandstorm, has enough money for his blink dagger. And this is a really fast blink, 11 minutes. They could try to set up a lot of kills with this. Yeah, Ramses, uh, he's only about, uh, how much gold is that? Only about 1,200 uh, gold away from his full defusal blade. And with the help of that blink dagger, they find Blizzy, but he pops the split just in time. So they are going to retreat from the side of... Uh, VP Pasha able to fire striker over to the other side. Magical, he's here. They're trying to focus down. He does get the channel of the epicenter off, so they are taking a lot of magical damage. On top of Crystallize, he is disarmed. And the Oracle Ultimate on top of Magical, but he just runs away. And the Storm Threat, he's over here, cleans up Seneco. And now they're looking for more Blizzy. His ultimate has faded, but they have lost the Sand King. Zyax, he has the lasso if he wants to commit to it on top of someone. But it's on top of the Ember. They get the Aphotic Shield, and now he's dead over the Batrider. And the Spirit running out again. Do they have anything to cancel this TP? They don't need to cancel the TP when they're able to get the kill. The three great kills for VP here in this bottom lane. Very questionable decision for Navi to try and take this fight here against VP. Because right now VP has a total net worth of roughly 20,000. And Navi only has 15,000. So they're like 33% ahead on VP. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, it is quite a a high early goat lead. And it doesn't feel like either PA or Ambassador is quite ready to fight yet. They don't even have like their basic first item like drums on an Ember. So it feels like they just need to be super defensive. And that's a big weakness of this Navi lineup. They have absolutely zero burst damage. They have a lasso, but they don't really have reliable stuns either. So it's gonna be super hard for them to find pickoffs. All they can do right now is fireman and pray. Dyer. Yes, sir. Uh, Solo has uh, has his track weeds. That's actually pretty early for him. I uh, usually see him be uh, uh, a bit more uh, poor here. As yeah, the net, rich. yeah, the net he's worth. Rich. You can see Ramses. He's already completed his defusal blade, and he's by far ahead the leader. Wonder if he just goes for a straight BKB next. And at that point, I feel like there is no way he can die in these fights. Because they just don't have the disable to look him down. Magical's the one actually trying to split push here from the side of Navi. This is an Ember Spirit. Early on to the game, he does almost zero damage to these towers. I mean, he can kill the creep waves, but that's kind of it. At the same time, VP is just pressuring this tier 2. So I feel like the moment they get some lifesteal up on Ramses, they can just go rogue. Yeah, I really like the fact that they commit Serpent Wars to these towers anyway. Even, even though it just dissuades Navi from contesting, even if they wanted to. Right, and Ramses is gonna go for that BKB, so I feel like the moment he gets it, uh, Navi just cannot fight anymore. And it's already so tough. And Crystallize gonna go for a Deso. I feel like this is what he has to do, become some kind of glass cannon. Radiant but at the same time, he's playing against heroes attack. like Sand King and Storm Spirit. So they're going to be able to find him if they want to. Yeah, it's uh, Pasha. We saw this early blink dagger, but it, uh, well, we haven't seen him do many ganks other than this bottom lane. So I actually had the vision for the Sand King, but they're not able to chase him. Just uh, this blink dagger, it's way too early. As we hear R Roger walk like a chicken, apparently. But at the same time, he doesn't really need to make these kills happen because his team is out farming the enemy team right now and they're waiting for a huge timing with this BKB. Yeah, so we talked about Ramsey's farm a lot. How do you feel about uh, no one? He already has the Kaya completed. Does he look for an Orchid just so he's able to pick off this Oracle on the back line? I feel like he just goes for a Bloodstone. I don't think an Orchid is necessarily needed. Uh, Bloodstone is a nice mix of a lot of tankiness, because Navi lacks damage, as well as just the insane mana regen. I feel like Bloodstone is the best option here. Yeah, Crystallize, uh, we haven't talked uh, about the PA for a while. Uh, Hand of Midas is completed, and now that Deso uh, shortly in queue. And once they have that Navi, they should have a decent amount of damage to be able to kill a lasso target, maybe. Yeah, but at the same time, Zayat is more than 2,000 gold away from a blink, so it's... I mean, VP is gonna have their key items before uh, Zayat has his blink, so I don't see how they're gonna be able to make these pickoffs happen. And you were totally right about this for the side of VP. They get lifesteal up on Ramses in the form of the Vladimir's offering, and they just go right into the Roche pit. They commit the Serpent Ward just to help him do it that little bit faster. But well, this is going to be a Roche for the side of VP. And then I wouldn't be surprised if they get rid of the, at 60 minutes, the last tier 2 tower remaining for the side of Na'Vi. VP is just playing a way higher tempo right now, and Na'Vi has a lot of trouble keeping up just because they're so far behind at this point. I feel this this might be a bit of the issue in the PA because usually when we see teams play this uh, slow tempo, they have heroes who accelerate, um, like the Drow, like the um, Naga Siren. They have inbuilt ways to be able to push the tempo. But this PA, all she has is a is a hand on Midas, but it's leaving her short, sorely behind. Yeah, and there is a reason why people stop Dyer's picking PA tower. just because it gets punished so hard in the laning stage. And the same could be said about Drow, but at least Dyer's she has a good way to catch back up. Attack. Crystallize Radiant is doing a pretty good job keeping up with the storm, but Radiant I don't feel like he's quite ready to fight just yet. Yeah, Ramses, he's pushing this tower. Zayak did cut the wave, but they have a few remaining creeps. They need to get rid of them. But Ramses, he might have this tower before the backdoor back regen comes back up. We will find out. They keep reapplying the aphotic shield here. 
Ramses really wants this tower. Will the regen come back up? No. So they're able to get that tier 3 for absolutely nothing for the side of VP. And now it's open season on these shrines. So it's, it's doing a good job. No one tipping back, but he isn't quite going to be in time. And it looks like he did decide uh, to go for uh, the Orchid instead. He had the Bloodstone in his queue for a while, but it looks like he just wants to have that solo pickoff potential. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, I have to agree with, agree with you. I, I really like... I know you said you prefer the Bloodstone just because it allows you to continue to scale, Radiant's continue to farm, always have mana. But just how are Navi able to win fights if, uh, let's say, he gets on top of the Oracle? That's an easy kill. The Brewmaster as well. I think they have the damage to bring him down if he's controlled. Oh, he's very deep. Yeah, Invis rune here from Roger. The Hex as well as the Shackles that no one has more than enough. And no one just heals back to full. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he continues to zip around. And Zayak, I think he's doing the same thing. He's just going to cut this mid wave again. His timing is perfect. But the Storm Spirit with the regen rune. No one he can think about going for this. This is so risky from Zayat. But actually, it looks like... they have a few creeps in the base. And that's all they needed. Magicals here, they have lost the creep. But they do have a little while. And this should allow Ramsey to be able to clean up this rain track. So they have 15 seconds to kill the range tracks. I doubt they'll be able to get the melee, but the ranged is a nice concession prize. Zayak, he's, he's doing it once again. They really have to handle this Batrider. Is he going to have a go at the courier? No, they have the vision for him. And now finally, he's not TPing away in time, so no one should have the easy kill here. He's a tiny bit more. You lasso TP. I think that should be enough. And Zayak, he's going to be able to get out. There we go. That, that's this, honestly great play by the Batrider there, if I'm honest. It saved yeah, their melee sure. and this, this is exactly what they need to do. They need to keep avoiding fights, cutting creep Dying waves. And they need to make sure that they give enough time for this PA to become relevant. And slowly but surely, we do see her catching up to Ramses. Just because of this Midas. And she has the Deso, so just another 3.5k gold. And she is going to be ready to fight. Is something that Navi fans can look forward to. Dyer. Are yes, so uh, Seneco uh, still very poor here for the side of Na'Vi. Well, we earlier we talked about how Solo was very rich because he had Tranquil Boots. Seneco wishes he could have those, only having a win late, not even Brown Boots. That's very rough. 20 minutes, no boots. That's an F from all the support players in chat. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, right there, just paying their respects. So, Pasha, he's gone for the hood for the side of VP. Um, do you think just, uh, is there that much magic damage coming out from the side of Navi that he wants to be mitigating? I don't feel like there is, uh, like any kind of damage for Navi is really high right now. But if you look at their lineup, most of the damage, except for PA, is going to be magical. So, if I had to buy any item to make me tankier, I would go for a pipe as well. That's <laughs> So you were talking about the PA doing physical damage, and it looks like she finally will do that with the completed Desolator. Invisibility. Looks like VP is content just farming until the next Rosh spawns. Because it doesn't look like they feel too pressured to force this high ground just yet. They could be waiting for the Troll BKB too, but that, at that point the Aegis is gonna be expired. Yeah, it's, it's, I know the Aegis might be expired, but it seems they're having so much trouble, you know, killing anyone once. And with that BKB, I don't think they'll they'll be able to kill you that first time anyway. And they have the Oikit on the Storm as well, so... This is definitely a power spike for a VP here, and they instantly go for a smoke too. Yeah, I have to Aegis say, I, I love these smokes as as the Aegis expires, because that's exact the exact timing that Navi's thinking... You know, they're not going to fight now. They don't have the Aegis. But they're doing the exact opposite, so you're not expecting it. Looks like Blizzy actually has 3k gold saved up. Yet yeah, he hasn't got the Radiance in his queue, but has a whole bunch of other things. But maybe he just has it in his back, in the back of his mind that maybe I could get a Radiance. Maybe I can help our team scale. I feel like a Crimson Guard would definitely be better though, just to make sure that people don't instantly die to this troll, who is still very dependent on a lot of small hits. Even though calling like 170 damage hits isn't really that small anymore, but you know. 
No, I mean, it reduces 170 to, you know, a lot less. Uh, and 120 before the armor calculation, so you might as well do it. Wow, I see Ramses knocking on the door of Navi's high ground here. Yeah, they put sentry while it's still in. It doesn't look like Navi is in a position to defend this just yet. Yeah, Ramses, he does have this BKB that we talked about, making him very difficult to fight. As well as the Serpent, there is a DVD here on Magical, but it just doesn't matter. This is definitely going to be in the second range rack, and they might finally start to look towards the melee barracks. Yeah, and Crystallize is still quite far away from The Lasso, it's on top of the troll. They bring him back. They have the Primal Spit. Ramsey, he pops his own BKB, but he's holding onto his ultimate, so he hasn't had to buy it. Burn it just yet. Be no one. He zapped into... The Dipped into the back lines to try and get the Oracle, but he's unsuccessful. So they are just backing off from the side of EP. They've lost the Abdon. They buy back. It's a nice fire strike. Epicenter onto two of them for the side of Pasha. They've lost the Oracle. Are they going to lose more? They lose both their cores. They buy back on the Ember Spirit. They haven't bought back on the PA just yet. Now they've bought back on all three of them, and I think VP are going to be happy with all of that. Do they have the catch for Ramsey? They know he doesn't have the ultimate or the BKB, but Pasha might have sacrificed his life here for the, the rest of his... There's his heroes, but Solo, he's here. He dispels a whole bunch of things. They use the Oracle over on Blizzy. He doesn't have the ultimate anymore, but he's trying to fight up against him. There's no mana remaining on this guy. And as soon as that Oracle ulti ends, I think he might go down. He does. He does have buyback remaining, but they've caught the PA. It's a nice bar strike. It's onto four heroes. That's basically a ravage. The slice of fist, it just doesn't matter. The controls, they've lost the Oracle. That was someone who bought back. And now all they want is crystallized. Roger, he goes forward. They have the Hex. It's on top of this Phantom Assassin. The Shackles, if she dies one more time, there's no buyback. They need a tiny bit more damage but the orchid pop it's that's not what does it solo with the right click and now there's no buyback these melee barracks are exposed and the side of vp they're still pretty damn healthy pasha just looking again for these initiations but it doesn't really matter ramses will have one melee barracks and i wouldn't be surprised if he has a second 60 seconds without their pa here the side of navi there's only three of them versus the five of vp that instant buyback from solo coming back to secure the fight yeah, what? and it's gonna be so hard to stop this. They have a few poke spells, but there is an Abaddon with Tranquil Boots just constantly healing up Ramses. And it looks like he isn't even taking damage in the first place. And they're just gonna go for the Megas. There's 30 seconds remaining without this PA. Navi, they also have the Serpent Wards. This fight has been going on so long that the Serpent Ward refresh has happened. Dayak has the Lasso, but he doesn't want to use it just because Zolo's sitting there. There's four seconds without it. They do have the disarm on Ramses, but it doesn't really matter. He uses the Fusion. They're going for Zyke. Meanwhile, no one. He's going for the back line, focusing the Oracle. This is what we talked about. Oracle, he's going to pop with the Orchid. Both of them dead. There is buyback, however, over here on Zyke. But these Serpent Wards, they're taking down the racks with the help of Ramses. They use the Bruce Split over here. There is no BKB over here left on the troll. They have the Lasso on no one, but he's able to zip away to safety as soon as that Lasso ends. Maybe with the help of the Aphotic Shield, he is getting very low. But they've lost their melee backs. No one is he able to escape. Does get to low ground. Meanwhile, over here, they're focusing the PA once more. Ramsey, he is missing. But he does get the hit. It's 52 seconds. And Navi, they call GG. BP, they're going to the epicenter major. It was a bit anticlimactic. But ultimately, BP just outdrafted and outplayed Navi in this game. Nothing else to say, really. Yeah, it's 